Hello and welcome everyone. So the removal partial denture, also known as cast partial denture, according to most literatures, has in total eight different parts. These are named as the major connectors, the minor connectors, the rests, the direct retainers, the stabilizing components, the indirect retainers, the denture base, and finally the artificial teeth. The parts, stabilizing components, direct retainers, and the rests when used in combinations can also be named as clasp assembly. So each of these parts has a specific function to perform in the entire removal partial denture design. And in this video, I will briefly go through them. So the first part is the major connector. Now in order to have an optimum and stable design, a removal partial denture needs to extend to both sides of the arch because just one sided removal partial denture will create a lot of instability in its design. So the component that connects these two parts that is the right and the left halves of the removal partial denture frame is known as the major connector. So a major connector basically performs the role of connecting both sides of the denture bases and act as a bridge between the two sides. In being the connection between the two halves, the major connector essentially transfers the functional forces such as the forces of mastication that are being applied on the artificial teeth as well as on the denture base. This essentially distributes the forces of mastication equally along the entire arch rather than concentrating that forces on any one side of the denture which would in the end create instability in the design. Therefore, major connector provide optimum stability to the prosthesis by connecting the two halves of the denture and distribution of the functional forces along the entire removal partial denture framework. Now there are other principles of major connector design and likewise there are also other various different types of mandibular and maxillary major connectors, each having their own specific usage that I will be discussing in my other video. But this core principle of major connector and its design remain essentially the same among all. Now the next part are the minor connectors. So minor connectors, as the name suggests, are also like major connectors, being a bridge between parts of the prosthesis, but their role is essentially to connect smaller parts like clasp assembly, indirect retainers, the occlusal rest, to the major connector. So they are not responsible for connecting the two halves of the denture, rather they connect the rest of the prosthesis to the major connector. And by providing these small connections, the minor connector also essentially helps in the distribution of applied functional forces and thereby stabilizing the entirety of the prosthesis and in turn transferring the stresses evenly across the different parts of the prosthesis. Hence that's why there are many different minor connectors present in a single denture. So just to summarize the difference, the major connector connects the two halves, the right and the left halves of the denture while the minor connector connects other parts of the prosthesis to the major connector. So if a load is applied on one side of the denture, it will be transferred to the major connector through various minor connectors and then to the other side of the prosthesis through the major connector. All of this in turn distributes the load throughout the entire prosthesis, which in turn increases the stability of the denture. This is the core principle of major and minor connectors. So moving on, the third part is the rest. So rest is basically a part of the prosthesis that is placed on the tooth surface and is responsible to provide vertical support to the denture. And by providing this vertical support, the rest maintains the components of the prosthesis in their plane position so that there is no unwanted movement of the denture, which could otherwise lead to impingement of soft tissues and other denture related issues. Now of course the rest cannot just directly sit on the tooth surface, hence some sort of minor tooth preparation is required for the rest to be able to sit properly on the tooth surface. So the prepared tooth surface on which the rest will eventually sit is known as the rest seat. Now other than this, the rests also maintain established occlusal relationships and they also direct and distribute the occlusal loads to the abutment team. So moving on, the next part we have are the direct retainers. So direct retainers by definition is the part of the prosthesis that engages an abutment tooth or in some cases, it may also engage an implant. 
Now the definition of engaging a tooth is very crucial in prosthodontics because by engaging a tooth it does not mean that direct retainers are applying continuous force on the tooth otherwise this could lead to unwanted orthodontic movement of the engaged tooth which in long term will not only create major dental problems but will also lead to failure of the denture itself hence the direct retainer essentially keep the denture in place so that the denture does not fall off while talking or mastication and similar functions so the direct retainer essentially help the prosthesis to resist its displacement away from the tooth or the tissues now direct retainers can either be a part of the clasp assembly along with other components of the assembly or it can either be in the form of an attachment so the next part which is very much related to the direct retainer is the stabilizing component or the reciprocal component Now as i previously stated the direct retainers if they were to apply continuous forces on the tooth without any reciprocation this could lead to unwanted orthodontic movement so as the name suggests the reciprocal component essentially provide reciprocation and counteract the lateral forces of the retentive arm that is functioning as a direct retainer so in short the retentive arm applies retentive forces for the denture to essentially be in its place while the reciprocal arm counteracts any of the harmful forces that may get applied on the abutment tooth in the process hence they are essentially present to stabilize prosthesis and help the retainer arm i will discuss more about the stabilizing and the retentive arms as well as their principles in my class assembly video so don't worry about that for now just try to understand the basic principle behind these components so the next are the indirect retainers To understand indirect retainers we first need to understand where they are used and for what purpose so the indirect retainers are important when making denture bases with distal extension distal extension bases as the name suggests are those bases that have an extension located on the far distal side of the denture and have no abutment tooth or a natural tooth distal to it such as the denture for the kennedy's class 1 and 2 have distal extensions because they both have posterior edentulous areas so in these cases where the denture has a distal extension there exist a very high chance of dislodgement simply because the denture is supported only on one side by the abutment teeth and has no support on the distal side and these distal extensions tend to dislodge and rotate the denture around the fulcrum line The fulcrum line is essentially the line or the axis around which the denture tends to rotate when it is being subjected to forces that direct it away from the ridge. Now it does not mean the denture starts rotating 90 or complete 180 degrees. What this concept essentially means is that there develops a tendency for the denture to dislodge itself around an axis. And even a minor rotation or instability of the denture can create many problems. So in cases like these the use of indirect retainer becomes extremely important to avoid dislodgement of the denture and its rotation around the fulcrum line. Now indirect retainer is not a specific component like previously were in the list it is rather any component that can serve as a function of this indirect retention. But when we have to deliberately provide indirect retention then an indirect retainer can consist of one or more occlusal rests and supporting minor connectors. One more important point is that an indirect retainer should be placed opposite to the fulcrum line as far away from the distal extension base as possible. So theoretically the best place for indirect retainers would be in the close vicinity of the incisor teeth, but they may not be strong enough to support the components of the indirect retainer. Therefore in such situations the nearest canine tooth or the mesial surface of the first premolar may be used despite them being close to the fulcrum line so if possible two indirect retainers should be used to compensate for the compromised distance the next component is the denture base so the denture base essentially supports the artificial teeth and holds them in their place It also receives the occlusal forces and transfers the forces to supporting oral structures. Other than this, it also has an aesthetic function by providing a more natural looking look to the wearer. It also works as a stimulator to the underlying tissues, providing stimulation to the oral tissues which thereby better maintain their form and tone over time. 
And finally we have the artificial teeth that are resting on the denture base. So apart from looking aesthetically pleasing while talking and smiling, these teeth also play a role in transferring occlusal forces to the denture base. So this was just a short overview on different components of a removal partial denture. In my later videos, I will be discussing about these parts individually in detail. For more study materials such as study notes, practice questions, quizzes, make sure to check out my Patreon page and consider supporting me and becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash studywithadentist. As always, I will meet you all next time. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.